Let's have a look at the next part of P2. And this is where we start to focus on information and information and its journey into the system and out of the system. This might all sound a bit unfathomable and strange at this stage, but let's look at what he currently does first of all. This will be one of your headings, data and information currently collected. In other words, what data or information does Justin use in his current system? in his current paper-based system. And let's not forget, this is a grand way of talking about the fact that he will write down their appointments on a card or in his diary. And that's the way that he records it. And that's the way that when someone rings up to book an appointment at the same time, he can look at that card and go, oh no, I can't do that. I've got an appointment that time, so it'll need to be somewhere else. So he's going to find a digital way of doing this, of making those decisions for him. So you are going to need to use that letter again and questions that you ask Justin via email to find out what data and what information he currently collects. Again, go back to the letter. It is all in the letter. Very dense letter with lots of information in it. Again, forensically analyze it and see if you can work out what information he's currently collecting. Example, he will need to know what time people have their appointments. But I'm not gonna to give too much away because that's your job. Um, you will need to make a list of all of the data that he currently uses. What data does he collect about his customers? How does he use that? What data does he give to his customers? What information does he give to his customers? Does he show his customers any information? For example, theory. That's for you to go to the letter and find out. Make a list of those different sets of information and how he uses it. Note that down. This is where we start to look at the more technical side of it. And this is a little bit more about computer science than it is about IT. The two are often very closely linked. But in this case, we start to look at how a system actually works. Any computer system is based on three functions, input, process, and output. So for example, if you're talking about a simple program which adds up three numbers, you would first of all input the three numbers here. You would then process it at the process stage. The three numbers would get added together by the processor, and then the answer would be output. So you need to think about the app with uh, Justin in exactly the same way. And we're gonna go through these one by one so you understand what they're about. Let's take an example which is moving away from computer science and thinking more about something that you've probably done or your parents have done in the last couple of weeks, which is you need to book a table. When you go onto a website and you go to the Pizza Express website and you wanna book a table, you input, keyword, a date and a time. So you've gone on to the website, you've put in the date and you've put in 1930 because you want to eat at half seven at night. You press enter. Then the system does some work. The system does some processing. The system will compare the time that you've input, and I think we said the time was 19.30. So let's say 19.30, which is half seven. 19.30 was the time that you want to eat. Then the system's going to verify whether that slot is free. Has someone else booked that slot? And you're gonna be left with either a yes or a no. Yes, the slot is booked, or no, the slot is free. If the slot is free, then you have booked that slot. And that's what's gonna change. The status will change to booked. However, if the slot is booked down here, then you'll get a message saying, choose another time, it's booked. And if it's free, you'll get a confirmation message saying, that's your slot. And you'll get sent a confirmation email, something along those lines. So that is really the extent to which you need to worry about this, just to make sure that you understand this concept of input, process, and output. 
if you can get your heads around this, then this whole task will be a great deal easier because you're going to have to think about what gets put into the app, what processes are going to happen, and then what comes out the other side. You don't need to worry about the technical details because you don't have to code this, but you do have to understand the information that's flowing around inside this app. What goes in, the process that happens to it, and what comes out at the other end. That really is important. So, once you've established what Justin currently collects, you then need to think about how is this going to work in the new system. Now don't forget, you're going to be working with the same sorts of information. It's still going to be date and time that need to be collected, but if you look at his letter, he's looking at collecting more data. Or he's, more, or he's looking at collecting all the data into one place, which is going to be the app. So try and bring all of that together. And by this point, you should be making two lists. One which is all of the data and information collected currently in the way that he works in his paper-based system. And secondly, the data and information that will be collected by the new system, by the app that he wants to you, you to make for him. Um, you then should have a list of currently collected and will be collected by the new system. And that should bring you to the end of this part of the task.